The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good uh, afternoon, everybody. It's uh, it's Paul here for the uh, next session in the Admiral Markets webinar series on mastering the four M's of trade. My name is Paul Wallace. I'm a trader, analyst, and uh, coach. And, and here we are, 21st of January 2019 for session 23, which will be primarily at the sort of next element of risk and reward. As always, before uh, we begin, we'll just uh, we'll just start with a quick risk disclaimer. Trading with financial instruments offered by Admiral Markets carries a high level of risk which is not suitable for all investors due to their complex nature. Before entering into a client agreement or making a transaction, please make sure to read the terms and conditions of our service. Consult a specialist if necessary to ensure you understand the risks involved in trading. This presentation and accompanying video is for information and educational purposes only. Online educational materials are developed by Admiral Markets and distributed by the Admiral Markets Group investment firms for a global audience. Therefore, please take into consideration that the information in this session may not be suitable for everyone. As of August 2018, the regulation within the European Union differs for retail clients and professional clients. In our presentation, we use demo trading accounts where all clients can still use a high leverage in a risk-free environment. Before opening a live trading account, please consider the differences between retail and professional trading terms. Retail clients benefit from unlimited negative balance protection. Professional clients at Admiral Markets UK receive a compensation of account deficits with a maximum payout of £50,000 sterling as per our negative balance protection policy. There are many uh, fine reasons to trade with Admiral Markets. Uh, if you can see there that uh, in terms of two of their very popular trading instruments, the DAX 30 and the Euro dollar, they offer very, very competitive spreads there during the uh, main open trading hours. They also offer the uh, MetaTrader uh, 4 and 5 platforms with the Admiral Markets Supreme Edition to overlay on top. If you have any questions about that, contact your account representative. Also, you know, it should be uh, known that Admiral Markets is a uh, global brokerage and is, uh, is authorised and regulated uh, across the world. And once again, if you speak to account representative, they'll be able to uh, inform you which is the, uh, the best environment for yourself. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, primarily I am a, a swing trader operating in the sort of FX indices and commodities markets. And uh, my main philosophy is to try and buy strength and sell weakness, uh, which I uh, use price action uh, tactics on uh, pullbacks for my uh, entries. Yeah. So I'm effectively looking to sort of trade the, the dominant trends. Whereas uh, as an intraday trader, I'm primarily a, a mean reversion trader. And that's something we'll touch upon uh, in later uh, later areas of this uh, of this webinar series. As always, you know, I like to set the expectations. It's, for me, it's about educate you about the four M's of trading and help you be able to go away, analyze a market, be ready to trade it, and also to help you raise your self-awareness about managing risk and about managing yourself. Uh, for uh, yourselves, just to be aware that you know we have a broad range of experience in the room. You know, we, we do have time limitations, which perhaps prevents me from going into the depth on some topics that people would like. So we're always trying to focus on tools that you can use tomorrow in your own trading. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, the Mastering the Four M's of Trading is really, you know, it's about uh, understanding from my own experience as a trader, from working with traders across the, uh, uh, both the sort of the pre professional and uh, retail uh, client base is recognizing that, you know, the traders who uh, do best, uh, you know, uh, in terms of sustainable success, tend to understand the four M's of trading and are able to master those four M's of trading, markets, method, money, and myself. And this uh, Admiral Markets webinar series is about helping you educate you about the four M's of, uh, of trading and allowing you the, uh, the opportunity to be, to, you know, to be educated in terms of how you uh, manage and master those four M's within your own trading business. So, uh, if you remember, ladies and gentlemen, you know, for the first, uh, um, you know, majority of the sessions, we talked about sort of, you know, the overall a ten-step plan, uh, and what we focused an awful lot of was on the sort of first five steps. And the whole idea is it's about 
but having a, a good routine, a good process, because that's actually what helps you create good trading habits. So we talked about, you know, whenever you open a chart, OK, you know, the first thing you'll do is define levels of support resistance. Second step is define if there is a trend. Step three, look to see how price reacts at a key support resistance levels. Whilst at those areas, look for particular price action signals and also just be aware of that if they are part of a bigger chart pattern uh, as part of the uh, as part of what you see on our uh, on our screens. So, you know, we, uh, you know, we focused, you know, last year on, let's say, the first five steps. And of course, this year we're going to you know, focus to begin with on the, uh, the remaining five steps. And for the last couple of uh, uh, sort of uh, sessions, we've. We've uh, focused primarily on step six, which was about risk. Okay, and in particular, it was in your introduction to risk and money management. And we'll just go through. I always like to go through just a, yeah, a little bit of a very, very brief recap. Uh, the reason being that, uh, especially when it comes to risk management, is that you know it's it's your job as a trader to to be on top of uh, managing risk. You know, within uh, within the uh, within your own trading business. So, you know, as I said right uh, back at the start of uh, step six, it's, you're a trader. So actually your prime job as a trader is to actually is to take risk. And it's therefore your job to manage risk. And that's your number one role as a trader. Okay, It's your job to manage risk. And so the better you become managing risk, the quicker your progression will be to where uh, your, let's say, your desired point as a, uh, as a trader. And that's what we talked a lot about over the last two sessions. We talked about how also it can be broken down into risk management in terms of management of open trading positions to avoid large losses, and then also about money management, effectively about setting the correct position sizes in relation to your overall portfolio and cash position. We talked about, you know, uh, uh, really, you know, having a few simple rules that we can live by as, uh, as traders and, and how we operate within our uh, trading business. And, uh, you know, here was a great quote by Mr. Soros, your principle is, his principle is to spy first and make money afterwards. And that's what we talked about right at the start of the step six was that, you know, have a, the rule of, you know, you always want to live to fight another day. OK, you don't want to be you want to be like that uh, that guy about to get shot down. OK, we don't need you to get shot down in your trading business. OK, we want you to live to fight uh, another day. We also talked about, uh, you know, a second rule that is never, ever find yourself in a uh, in a trade without uh, an exit plan. OK, and, and, and we see that, uh, you know, I see that a great deal. OK, on uh, on traders and, you know, uh, and, you know, just, uh, you know, both, uh, let's say both, you know, uh, amateur and institutional traders. OK, that sometimes they are uh, they find themselves in a trade without an exit plan. OK, you know, and, and it's your, you know, it's your, let's say your second rule, OK, is never, ever find yourself in a trade without an exit plan before, you know, you pull the trigger on a trade. And, uh, you know, what we focused on is understanding, you know, where are the exits, okay, and realizing that there are two types of exits, okay, where we get out when we're wrong, okay, and where we get out when we're fortunate enough to be, uh, to be right. And I talked about how um, new traders, inexperienced traders, they always look to focus on entries, okay, they're always curious and they always want to know where is their entry. Whereas professional traders, okay, experienced traders, they are more worried about their exits. Okay, they're more worried about you know where they get out when their trade idea you know, has failed, or whether where, where and how they're getting out when you know, they're fortunate enough to be right. And we're going to touch upon sort of latter half of that uh, you know later on in our session here today. So you know uh, what we talked about is uh, risk profile is a very personal thing. You know that uh, some people are more uh, accepting of risk some people are, are, are more sort of uh, very cautious okay when it comes to risk we talked about how it's important to know you know to know yourself and in terms of you know risk profile is, is a very personal thing no nobody nobody understands your uh, your own risk parameters better than you yourself but as a general rule of thumb what we talked about is that you know we keep it quite simple all right okay you never look to risk more than one percent of your capital on a single trade and we sort of repeated that Never look to risk more than one percent of capital on a single trade. Okay, that's uh, you know some people. I know some people who risk just a little bit more. Some people who actually risk a lot less. Okay, I know traders who will risk you know half a percent, a quarter percent. I even know traders will risk like 0.1 of a percent. Okay, and it is about your risk profile, right? It's a, it's a very very personal thing. Okay, the important thing is if you know if, if as a general rule of thumb that you never risk more than one percent of your capital on a single trade well then you will invariably you will help yourselves meet that first rule rule number one remember that which was to uh, live to fight another day and that's you know if you're only ever risking more than one you know no more than one percent on a single trade well then that will allow you to do that 
So, you know, we talked about, uh, you know, quite a lot of it through is that, you know, money management is, is one of actually the simpler topics to grasp. So it seems to be the hardest to follow for, for lots of traders. OK, they, they, they have good ideas you know, or they have good intentions when it comes to risk management, you know, money management, but they, they fail to de deliver on it. Uh, and, you know, lots of traders, OK, you know, they lose simply because they don't really have an understanding or they place no importance on it. And, you know, without a sense of money management, most traders simply hold on to losing positions for an extremely long amount of time, but take profits on winning positions far too prematurely. Uh, you know, we see that a lot, you know, in kind of trading behaviours that, uh, you know, uh, inexperienced, you know, traders who don't understand risk management, they hold on to their, you know, their losing positions far, far too long, but also, you know, they, they, they take their profits far too swiftly, okay, and that doesn't. That doesn't really help them in building their uh, trading business. So uh, what we talked about in the letter, the last session was that you know another uh, you know sort of additional rule was that to protect yourselves at all times when you're you know trading in markets and in trading you know we do that by the use of a protective stop loss. Okay, trading without one ignores the potential damage the market can do to you psychologically, emotionally, and financially. And that's what we want to, to help you to uh, avoid. All right. That's what we want to help you to avoid. OK. You know, we want you to be able to sort of, you know, to, to trade in, you know, in a, uh, in a in a sort of a comfortable state in terms of, you know, not being able, not being over risk, not being, you know, over leveraged. OK. Not over trading, but actually just operating like, you know, a, a sound, effective professional in the markets. You know, what we talked about at the last session was, you know, you have to protect yourself at all times and in every trade, and it almost needs to become like a subconscious habit, okay? Remember what I said, rule number two, never enter trade without an exit plan. So, you know, you have to protect yourself at all times. And if, you know, if you take, a, you know, a, a losing trade, don't take it personally, okay? It's not, it says nothing about you. But, um, you know, trading a loss or taking loss without a protective stop loss order or removing your stop loss order on a trade, you know, okay, that that that's a very dangerous thing to do, and, and it will invariably get you into uh, into trouble. So, uh, you know, we you know, briefly touched on you. Know, there's actually lots of different types of protective stop losses, okay, and we went through them a little bit last week. And um, what we talked about is actually technical analysis stops is the ones that you know majority of us will be focusing on because it allows us to to use the charts that basically give us an entry, but they can also give us an exit when we work out, you know when our uh, trade idea has uh, has failed. So yeah, so we, you know, we, we said we wanted to look at uh, technical analysis stops and that's what we covered last week. What you'll find is if you know you're joining the session for the first time and you want to understand that, well then you'll find that all of these uh, uh, webinar sessions are in, uh, are in the uh, Admiral Markets uh, webinar archive. You can find them on either the uh, uh, YouTube channel or the Admiral Markets Facebook page. So, you know, we said so we did have a little bit of a look at some uh, technical stop losses. OK, so, you know, where we're looking at technical analysis uh, and there's various types of technical stops, pivot, support, resistance, moving averages, prior days, highs and lows, trailing congestion areas and, and parabolic uh, SAR, OK, support, resistance. Uh, and what we're actually going to do next week's session, ladies and gentlemen, so that'll be session 24, it is that, you know, we're going to uh, look at, we're just going to spend most of the time just looking at the charts. And just actually showing you, you know, how you can actually place stops there, how you can actually work with them, how you can actually say, you know, work out your exits, okay, in terms of your exits, in terms of, you know, getting out when your trade idea has you never know, failed or getting out when your trade idea is going in the correct uh, direction. And a lot of that will, uh, you know, lead on from what we're going to cover for the remainder of our session today. So, you know, uh, what we talked about was, you know, preparing to uh, to take your trade, okay? What we wanted to, to be able to do was that, you know, whenever you're looking to take a trade, it's important that, you know, you quantify your trade risk, right? And you, and you do that by identifying where you place your stop losses. You know, you quantify your trade risk by, you know, working out the difference between your entry price versus your exit price if your trade idea fails. Then you want to be able to do is you know, quantify your reward, which is what we're going to talk about later uh, today. And that is really, that's your entry price versus your exit price at the at the target for your uh, target for your trade and that allows us to calculate your risk to reward you know what often you apply here traders can talk about their three r okay the risk to reward ratio uh, and that allows us to identify whether our, you know, is, our trade is a, is a valid idea we also talked about uh, position sizing okay you know in terms of how to uh, position size your your trades uh, and we looked at how you know your, your trade risk divided by your capital risk 
equals you know your position size right and uh, once again it's, it's very important that you understand it and you're able to uh, you know effectively demonstrate that trade after trade and if you look back at uh, i think it's uh, would have been probably session uh, 21 session 22 that okay, they primarily focused on that position sizing and, and you'd be very uh, you'd be very welcome to actually uh, to sit and uh, go through them and, and, and by all means try and learn from them so you know what we talked about for step six was that you know you know it, money management is a simple topic to grasp though it, it can be very hard for traders to follow you can overcome a lot of bad luck with proper money management techniques remember that rule number one live to fight another day that allows you to stay in the game, develop the skills and experience to profit from markets in the uh, in the long run. So if you only overtake, if you only ever take two things from the the whole of uh, the step six sessions that we've done is uh, you know, never risk more than one percent in any trade, never ever trade without a stop loss. You know, if you, if you you know from the whole of the uh, mastering the four M's uh, Admiral Markets webinar series, if if you were to only even just do those two, okay, even if you only to do just those two rules, okay, then. Uh, I assure you that that would that would help put you in uh, that would help move you up the uh, the sort of let's say the trading totem pole in terms of your uh, in terms of your ability and and your long term success. So you know we step six was all about risk. Okay, step six was all about risk and it was about managing risk. Step seven, what we're going to talk about today is the the other side of the coin. Okay, it's all about reward. All right, so how do we how do we quantify what our reward is for our uh, for our trades and we'll Talk about you know this session and next session about how how we go about that how we actually sort of look to uh, how we look to sort of uh, develop that how we can look to sort of utilize that to, to help put us on the uh, the right size with our uh, with our trade ideas and uh, we'll uh, you know, we'll have plenty of uh, interesting stuff to, to go through. So if you remember, you know, we had sort of talked about, you know, one of the other uh, elements, okay, secret behind success is to embrace risk, not to uh, not to avoid it. That's a quote by Mr. Soros. And we've talked about that, okay, in terms of, you know, the last couple of sessions. Uh, and we talked about, you know, as I said, you know, as we're traders, it's our job to manage risk. And the best, better we become at managing risk, the, you know, the kind of more long-term success we'll have as traders. And if you uh, remember, we talked about, okay, so, you know, step six was about the, the two types of exits and that. And step six was all about where we get out when we're wrong. That's what that's all about, you know, where we get out when we're wrong. The step seven is about where we get out when we're fortunate enough to be right. Okay, and that, that's what we're going to be looking at, okay, for, for this session and the next one about, you know, where we get out when we're fortunate enough to be right. So, you know, some of you, you know, watching and listening here today, okay, you know, you may already have some ideas about, you know, how you uh, how you exit your trades when uh, when the trade is going your uh, direction. And uh, we'll talk about them, you know, as a, as a kind of a basic level in today's session, and we'll go and look at it a bit more uh, uh, in depth in next week's session. But, uh, you know, realistically, okay, you know, it's, um, you know, it's, it's about understanding that. As I said, we've dealt with risk. And it's now based on you know, the, the kind of that flip side of the coin reward. It's, I mean, we want to understand how we can quantify our reward. So, you know, looking at entry price versus our exit price, if we're right. So we need to understand, you know, what, what are our options for the, when it comes to reward? What are our, uh, what actually are our options? What can we look at that will, uh, that will actually help us? So uh, effectively, you know, what we have is if you boil it down, you have, you have effectively two options when it comes to uh, at defining your exit when you uh, when your trade is going in your direction. So uh, on one side we have you know we have a target. Okay, we have a specific you know price point in place that we have as a set target on our trade, and you know we look to you know, to hit that. Or on the flip side of it, we have uh, what we might call the, a, a trailing stop. Okay, and that's where uh, we will move what we set at uh, from step six as our stop loss, which has to protect our uh, risk and downside. As the trade moves in our direction, we actually trail our stop loss behind our position in order to hopefully, a little bit like the diagram there, you know, hopefully to, you know, to sort of harvest uh, harvest a, yeah, a bigger bounty, shall we say, you know, from our uh, from our running trade. And of course, you know, if we uh, if we're fortunate enough to be into uh, you know into a position on a dominant trend, well, then that allows the opportunity to, to you know to, to you know um, take the, you know good uh, good profits on our trades. So let's have a quick chat about you know what's the what's the benefits of either or okay whether you have targets whether you use trading in terms of targets what well, you one of the benefits you have is certainty okay so you you know where your target is going to 
going to be. You know, you know, right, you know, once you place the uh, the trade, okay, you know that your target is in place, so you have an element of certainty. Human beings, we, we like certainty, okay, so it, you know it provides you with that certainty. It's also kind of you know hands off, right? Once the once that target is there, it, it you know it you know you can effectively walk away from that trade, okay? So you know it uh, allows you to be hands off, and if you're hands off, then that means you're more likely. To, uh, to leave the trade be and, and less likely to try and uh, you know, easier to resist your impulse to impulsive nature to, to want to sort of tamper with your trade. It also requires less time, okay, it doesn't actually require you know, that much time once the trade is set, and apart from just checking that the order is still on your uh, um, still on your uh, platform, then you know it actually takes less time. And and that also means it's, it's sort of requiring less psychological capital from yourself, okay. The same way that you have financial capital at risk when you have a trade on, you also have, you know, emotional, psychological, psychological capital, you know, in play as well. And the, the the less you need to sort of call upon that, the uh, the easier it is for you to operate as a as a trader. You know, then as I said, there's less interference, okay. And what I mean by that is that there's less, you know, there's less opportunity for you to, as I said earlier, just to have those uh, impulsive uh, desires to sort of, you know, to either to sort of just snatch at a profit okay you know to when we see it you know, when we see a trade going in our direction and all of that means it's, it's a little bit easier to follow as a trader okay it's a little bit easier to follow a little bit um, as i said takes less time less psychological capital so it can be easier to follow and, and in many ways it almost like allows you to fire and forget okay so you, you know your trade is triggered you know that you have your stop loss which is your exit for if you're wrong you also have your target where you know your exit for when you know that the trade is um, the trade is right and and going in your direction in terms of you know if you are a trader who would prefer to sort of set a trailing stop okay it's actually just trail your stop behind the, the price action but what are the benefits that we have in place well you know it, it allows you to stay with the the trade much much longer okay it allows you to sort of try and you know ride it or you know as i said harvest as much as you possibly can which means that you can possibly have higher profits okay possibly you know if you are in a fortunate position to be in a uh, very long extensive train it also provides you know, a locus of control, okay? And, and what, what do I actually mean by that is that, you know, is that, you know, human beings like to feel that they have a locus of control, that they are in particular controlling their surrounding environments. Okay? And, and traders are no different now. You know, we, we are still human beings at the end of the day. But, you know, by having to sort of uh, trail or stop, but, you know, it forces us to, to basically, uh, um, you know, watch the trade, manage the trade. It, it gives us a feeling that we are in control of the trade. Now, some might say that you know that that's a little bit um, you know that could be debated, all right? So that's, that's debated. You know, we're actually we're not really in you know we're not really in control of the uh, of a trade. Once once a trade is triggered in the market, you know, literally anything can happen. And some people find it easier to to follow. Some people find it easier to sort of follow uh, you know their trades with a uh, trading stop loss because what it means is that they can effectively um, you know they they find it. Easier to be engaged, okay. They they actually you know keep on top of their uh, their trading business, and so that helps them in terms of their good habits and behaviours. So, so they're just some of the benefits of uh, you know having a, a trailing stop as opposed to a, a set target. Which is the uh, is the best, of course. You but you you're bound to ask, you right? So uh, you know, well, you know, for me, okay, I tend to use targets, right? Uh, generally, for most of my trades, especially intraday trades. Well, why is that? Well, um, neither one is particularly, you know, is particularly better than the other. And for what I find, you know, I, I'm an I'm an ex-military man. Okay, I ex-military man. I, I like to hit a target. Okay, it's um, it's simpler for me. Also, because you know, I sometimes have to travel with my uh, with my cons coaching and consultancy work. That actually it just allows me to almost, as I said, set and forget on a on a trade. Okay, if, I, if I'm away from my desk or I'm away from uh, from my kind of trading computer, it just allows me to set my trade and, and actually just let that run that trade run. So you know, for me, as I said, I tend to use uh, I tend to use targets. But then you know, other traders, you know, are very very happy trading their stops, and you know, and that's and that you know, and they they are very very successful. So you know, which is the best? The, the best is the best. The best one for you, okay? The best one for you. Which is the one that you can actually consistently follow trade after trade? That is the most important element, okay? Which is the part that is easier for you to follow? So you know there there is no perfection, okay? There is there is no perfection at all. So you know I have a little uh, I have a little trade idea here, just to you know 
if people think that, oh, you know, because Paul uses targets, that must mean it's perfect. Well, I'll, you know, I'll show you here how it's it's not perfect. Okay, this is this, you know, this is a good example of a trade on the uh, the yen from a few years back now. But um, you know, I, I was actually, you know, I was getting long here. Okay, as you know, as the price was a uh, price was breaking out. Okay, and I had a nice uh, uh, stop loss here. Okay, my stop loss was down around about here. I think. And actually, my target was the, uh, the sort of uh, you know the, the kind of weekly 200 period moving average, and price you can see you know got up and moved up there very nicely, and my trade and my my overall risk to reward ratio was you know it was 0.3.7 R for me, which you know is a, is a very nice trade, is very handsome trade. I was very happy with it, but you can also see, ladies and gentlemen, you know you can also see that actually it went further, it went much 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 further. <coughs> Excuse me. And that you know, using <coughs> I do apologise, is that using just you know a, even just a, you know a simple trailing stop would have allowed me to to have effectively have to have run that trade you know a, a good deal longer and actually you know I may have ended up I may have ended up back up here okay which probably would have been you know more like twenty R okay plus twenty R so as I say there is no perfection. There is no perfection. I want to show you, you know both sides of the uh, of the coin. There's no there is no perfection. But what you just have to do is to be able to to, to consistently do one or the other trade after trade after trade. Okay, and that's that's the important thing. There is no perfection. It's about finding the most simple way to to be consistent in your trading. And you know, as I say in, in my sheet uh, about myself, the description at the start of every uh, at the start of every session, I talk about you know, I'm very very keen on keeping it simple. Okay, for me. You know, less is more when it comes to trading. The easier you can keep it, the simpler you can keep it, the more likely you are to, to be able to follow it and, and have consistent success. So, you know, with that in mind, what, what are we looking at? I think the important thing here is I want you to take away, ladies and gentlemen, is that you to decide on your approach before the trade is even placed. Right, decide on your approach before the trade is even placed. And, and what do I mean about that? Is because actually, you know, I see traders, you know, they they you know, they go on and uh, they have a uh, you know, they have a target in place, but then as the trade goes their direction, what we find is they they start wanting to trail their stop as well. Now that's you know that's you know it is possible for you to do both to have a target in place and actually trail your stop. That's that is not uh, that is you know that is uh, you know that's absolutely fine if it's your trade plan. What I'm you know, getting at is, you know, just because the trade, you know, is, is triggering there's no going your own way and you're not sure if it's going to reach your target, wanting to sort of, you know, trail your stop, you know, an impulsive move like that, that is what is not ideal, okay? That's not what's ideal. So, you know, once your trade is open and short, changing tax, okay, that is, you know, that's not what we want to see, okay, as traders. Just have, you know, decide on what you're going to do. You can have a target or you can have a trailing and stick with it, okay? Just stick with it. So, you know, for, for if you're going to use a target, make sure you have a past targeting idea. And what do I mean by that? Is I mean that, you know, your risk to reward ratio should be what we call an asymmetric reward to risk ratio. So, you know, I'm saying that it's ideally, you know, two to one and above. Okay. So if you're, let's say, if you're risking 1% of your, you know, of your trading account, it's £10,000, you're risking £100, well, then, you know, the, you should have a target away that is in a suitable place that allows you to, uh, to achieve at least two to one. Okay, so you know, if you're going to risk hundred pound, you want to see that your trade can generate two hundred pound return for you. Okay, that's what the thing, and that's and that's what we're going to touch on a little bit more on uh, next week. Okay, just for uh, ideas around that. Uh, if you are going to use a trailing stop, okay, that you know, make sure you have a very simple, suitable trading strategy. Okay, and okay, next week we will show you that. Okay, I'll show you a couple of very simple trailing strategies. All right, to allow you to do that. What I mean by that is that you know we we find you know I, I see traders who you know who are using trading stops, but actually what they do is you know to, to begin with they um, to begin with you know they're, they're trailing it every year uh, three bars and then suddenly they start to get a little bit excitable and, and they start trading in just one bar they just they change the plan halfway through the trade because they think the trade is just going to about to turn around uh, upon them. You know and, and once again it, it is about you know your your trading strategy should be in place before the trade is triggered. Okay, before the trade is triggered, not you know, not just being made up on the hoof uh, as you go through the uh, as you go through the you know the actual trade itself. Okay, that's what we're that's what I want to try and get across to. Okay, it's important to have just a very simple way that you can follow trade after trade after trade. That is actually what's important. 
So, you know, as we said, you know, regardless of which you choose, the important thing is to plan the trade and, and trade the plan. Right? That is what is important. Okay? Plan the trade and trade the plan. Don't let your reward be decided when the trade is open or, or change tax once the trade is up and running. That's that's not what we want to that's not what we want to see. Have a plan and stick with it. All right. If you know deciding whichever one you want, just you know, stick with it, okay? Find something that is easy for you to consistently repeat. That is that is key, ladies and gentlemen. All right? Absolutely key. <clears throat> Excuse me. As I said earlier, there is no perfection. There is no perfection, and you know, trying to think that you can achieve perfection in your trade management is, you know, is is you know, not the not the smartest idea. Okay? It's about finding something that you can consistently repeat trade after trade. And what I want to do is to think about samples of trades rather than the outcome of one single trade. Okay? We want to be thinking about trades of you know blocks of twenty five or fifty or a hundred, three hundred, etc., rather than the outcome of just one particular trade. And we'll, I'm going to touch on that in a future session around about that kind of the, the biases and how we uh, we exhibit them in our in our trading work. But it is you know just find something that is you know consistently repeatable. So if some people with targets, okay, they just have a very simple three to one target, okay, then you know, whatever they whatever they're risking, they're hoping that the trade will you know allow them to generate at least three to three to one on their reward to risk. And that's 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 absolutely that's absolutely fine. And we'll show you a bit more on that sort of next week. Some people you know, might have a very simple plan, you know, just a simple sort of trailing strategy with you know two bars, okay, and it just basically the strategy is just tucked underneath their uh, you know the sort of the, the last two bars, and that's what they will work on, and that's what they'll do it, and they will you know and they will just follow that, and that is once again that is absolutely fine. That's what you know, we're aiming for. It's about just having a very simple plan that you can execute. What you don't want is you don't want ambiguity to, to reign, especially if you're an intraday trader, right? What we're trying to do is to try to avoid ambiguity because if there's ambiguity about what you're doing or changing your mind, especially in, let's say, a short time frame, fast moving market, it just allows, you know, sort of uh, that ambiguity means that you're just more likely to trip yourself up, okay? You're more likely to make mistakes, you're more likely to sort of give back your, uh, your profits to the, to the market. So just have a very very simple plan. All right, just follow it, and then just just basically make sure that you know you, that you follow it in the trade. You don't you don't feel the need to sort of change tack during the trade because that's not uh, that's not really the, the smartest way to be doing. It. So, ladies and gentlemen, you know, for, just to uh, make you aware for the future 29 sessions of the forums, we, you know, we've, we've been talking about money, and we'll still we've got another session or two uh, on that in terms of money management. Then we'll be looking at the uh, the managing of myself. Okay, how do we manage it performance as a trader? How do we recover if we've had a little bit of a slump in our trading performance, and how do we go about improving our performance as traders? We'll also talk a little bit about shorter term trading. Okay, how you can look at that. And also, you know, we'll uh, we'll add some uh, we'll add some advanced trading tactics in place as well. <coughs> Excuse me, and that should uh, hopefully you know give us lots to to work for, lots to look forward to in terms of the kind of number of sessions that um, we'll be doing for uh, for the rest of the year. So you know, as always, ladies and gentlemen, just you know, remember to to manage the uh, the four M's of trading within your own trading, all right? Market method, money, and myself. Just make sure that you're you're actually doing that, okay? It's it's very easy to talk about it, but you know what we want to check is that you are actually doing it, okay? That you're mastering those four M's of trading. Right? It doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be very complicated. It could just be very simple, you know, very simple at the end of the week, asking yourself, you know, how have you done this week in terms of managing, you know, the markets, method, money, and myself. You know, and there's always something to be learned from that. Always something to be something to be gained, something way we can uh, work and improve. So uh, if you've uh, got any questions about uh, this session or one of any of the, the previous sessions, then by all means, you can get in touch with your account representative or, you know, you can contact uh, Admiral Markets here on the uh, the London number of 020-726-4003. Drop them an email at hello at admiralmarkets.com and follow these uh, sessions on the youtube.com forward slash Admiral Markets or uh, on the Facebook page at uh, facebook.com forward slash Admiral Markets Global. So be sure to uh, check them out, okay? And uh, and as always, you know, as always, you know, as I said, the, the, the previous sessions are all up there on the uh, YouTube and Facebook page. So, you know, if you've missed one or two of the sessions or if you feel that you need to 
sort of get a little bit more uh, uh, insight, then be sure to sort of go back and go through them. You'll, you'll find there is a, a wealth of interest and uh, detail in there. So uh, we've got uh, just a, a, you know, a few minutes left. And uh, what I wanted to do is, you know, we will just go over and have a little look at uh, some charts. I appreciate it. it's been a rather... Uh, been a rather interesting week, ladies and gentlemen, in, in terms of you know what's been going on. Certainly here in the uh, the UK, and that's had a, an impact on markets. So you know, as always, if there's time left at the end of the session, I always like to try and just have a have a little look at some uh, some particular charts and see what uh, might be setting up for you for for the remainder of the uh, of the week. As I said, next week's session is going to be you know mostly on the charts because I want to sort of embed show you how we uh, we sort of embed step six and step seven. Okay, risk and then reward into our trading uh, work and, and how we can uh, how we can work with that. So just bear with me, we'll just uh, switch across to the uh, Admiral Market uh, MetaTrader 4 platform, okay? Uh, this is what we use uh, here, okay? Now, uh, what, what I have here is this, this is, uh, I've got a profile here, for those of you who are new to trading, okay? Um, I have a profile here, and this is a profile I have set up for the, uh, for the British pound, hopefully you can see it there. And what I've got is, you know, the kind of the, the, the sort of seven major uh, FX uh, currencies against the pound. So up here, we've got pound against the dollar. I've got the euro against the sterling. I've got, you know, pound against the Canadian dollar, pound against the Aussie dollar. I've got pound against the yen, pound against the Swiss franc, pound against the Kiwi dollar. And then at the bottom, uh, right, I have the FTSE here, the, the UK index. So, you know, at, at a very, very quick, broad brush view, I can have a, a very quick look at, you know, what is going on in, in that particular currency pair, what's going on in that, uh, in the sterling. So what we had today, okay, it's the 21st of January and about, uh, it would have been about maybe about an hour or so ago. It was, it was still going on as uh, we were starting this session, but an hour, hour and a half ago, uh, the Prime Minister, Theresa May, was outlining her uh, her plan B, should we say, for, uh, for you know, what she was going to do with the Brexit deal. So, you know, most of us believe that her plan A was just, uh, or rather her plan B was just much more of the same of plan A. But uh, clearly we can see how the, you know, the markets reacted to that because we can see what, uh, you know, what's, what's been happening. And if I just show you here, okay, over the last couple of hours here, the pound has uh, strengthened against the US dollar. Uh, here it's pound strengthened against the euro because basically when that when euro sterling is, is falling, that means euro is getting weak and the sterling is getting stronger. Uh, Sterling is getting stronger here against the Canadian dollar. It's getting it's stronger here against the Australian dollar. Down here on the bottom left, it's getting stronger against the, you know, the pound against the yen, getting stronger against the pound against the Swiss franc, pound against the Kiwi dollar. All right. Uh, and, but then what we have seen is you know the FTSE is just uh, the FTSE is just you know is drifting down and after after a big after a big push up on Friday. Okay. Although I think uh, I think what we'll find is the uh, the kind of Friday push-up was was more about uh, sort of news coming out of uh, China about the uh, the sort of uh, the trade deal with the, uh, with the with Trump and the Americans, and and actually that uh, it was more of a particular drive than anything to do with um, anything to do with uh, uh, with Brexit per se. So you know that there we have you know just as a uh, you know that's you know how I'll, how I will have my uh, sort of charts all set up okay because it allows me. Very very quickly to get a very quick snapshot, okay, of uh, of what was what's happening on the uh, on the, the trades themselves. Uh, you know, and, and if I you know if I uh, look down here, okay, if I look, let's say for example something like the uh, let's say for example something like the euro against the sterling. Let's maybe have a look out at the uh, the, the weekly chart. Let's just remove those. Uh, go. Let's just super. So you know this is the uh, the euro against the the, the sterling here, okay? And uh, you can see probably that um, you know those of you who join me on Tuesday mornings, so Tuesday London at ten o'clock, where I go through the real time daily trading ideas. And what we'll find is what you'll see here is that you know uh, is that we've talked about it, you know, for really since uh, since September two thousand and seventeen. So you know we're getting on towards like fourteen months, fourteen fifteen months. Um, the euro sterling has just really been in a range between around about 87, 87.50 and 90, 90.50. And you can see for yourselves, ladies and gentlemen, you know, down here, okay, price drifted down to it and then uh, rallied up. And then once it rallied up, okay, price sort of came back down to it, then it's gone back up to it, and now it's come back down uh, again. So you can see that that market is in a is in a range, certainly on the kind of the bigger time frame, and that's the, you know, that's what we'd be. Uh, Looking at and you know that's not really a surprise to us, ladies and gentlemen. The reason being is you know there's Brexit negotiations are coming on over the last uh, 
the last few uh, uh, weeks, you know, that you know, as the sort of news has come out from you know both sides of the uh, the table, well, then very that has had an impact in terms of you know shoveling the uh, the sort of uh, uh, shoveling the euro sterling rate back. And four. So, you know, for me as a trader, I'm you know, kind of whenever time price gets down to around about 8750 area, and I'm interested in looking to be a buyer. Every time price gets up to around about 90950 area, well, then you know, I'm interested in looking to be a, a seller because I, you know, I consider that these prices are still just bouncing back and forth again. Okay? And until we get a specific <clears throat> response, okay, from, uh, from the UK government in terms of whether they are going to, you know, um, uh, you know, extend the deal, or or ditch Brexit, or actually leave Brexit with uh, with no uh, particular deal. Well, then you know that, of course, has has an impact on that euro sterling. Right? So, you know, last uh, couple of weeks ago, we saw you know really big sort of you know this is uh, having sort of you know having prices. One of the things here uh, we'll show you is you know we, what we've shown a lot of is you know this is a big weekly you know key reversal, it's engulfing candle. We can see that price rallies all the way up. Then we have a, a you know, momentum reversal candle here, price falls all the way down. Then we have you know another key reversal engulfing candle before price rallies up. Uh, then we have a uh, you know, a, a weekly sort of uh, uh, that is a, a weekly you know, almost like a you know, it's a pin bar, it's an engulfing candle, it's a key reversal candle before we see price sort of drop back down to that eighty seven fifty year. So you know I'm going to be looking to see you know if price gets down there, you know how does it react? Okay, how does it react? And if you know if it uh, if it looks to you know, put me a, give me a reversal signal, well, then I'd be looking to sort of establish a, a, a short, uh, sorry, a long position. I do apologise, and that position would be about you know, me buying towards uh, you know, pushing back up to that kind of 87, 50, 90 area. So it'll be uh, you know that'll be just a case of that's presently just added to my uh, watch list. So I'll just keep uh, keep looking and watching and seeing what uh, what particularly happens with that. And I think that over the year, uh, you know, as we run down the, the sort of the clock, I think undoubtedly that's going to have. Uh, that's going to be pushed about a great deal as a uh, as a as a particular uh, as a particular currency. So uh, one of the uh, one or two of the other ones that I, I'm interested, in, of course, is always a pound against the dollar. I mean, people are interested in pound against the, uh, the the dollar there. So uh, you know the weekly chart, okay, you know it's been kind of interesting in the sense that uh, here we go. Let's just put another level on this, this particular chart. So, um, you know, what we can see here, this is once again, it's the weekly chart, is that, you know, price ran up really nicely in 2017. Then effectively, you know, it hit the uh, it hit the sort of the, the green 200 period moving average. If you remember, we talked about the uh, moving averages, you know, right back in one of the earlier sessions and about how they can be used as dynamic support resistance. We can see that's what happened there. We also had another key reversal, going bearish and golfing candle before price fell away. Okay, that's what, um, that's what the, you know, the, the, the trade was. Then we had, a, you know, remember another pattern here. It turned out to be part of the flag pattern, and actually, it's, it's continued to sort of uh, uh, roll its way down. But then, you know, it, it hits these kind of levels here at about 126. It came down, and then it's actually bounced up again. And then, uh, then we see that, you know, it's actually if we go down to the short time frame, well, then actually, you know, we've, we've clearly sort of uh, hit the uh, the 130 level there as well. And so, the question to be asked is, you know, what, you know, what, when did that happen? How did that? How did that happen? Well, you know, in surprising as we go down the uh, the sort of the, the the time frames, what you're looking at here is you know, this is the four hour chart on the, uh, the sort of pan against the dollar. It's been moving up. It, it's hit. Okay, we can look at here. You know, it literally hit. You know, you can see there for yourself. It hit 130. Okay, the big round number. See it hit there, and, and literally, you know, as soon as it hit, it, it, it fell. It fell away. Right. So just imagine there must be lots of orders at that particular level. That kind of big round psychological number. Lots of people just with orders to either buy or to sell for their own particular trade ideas, uh, and what you're looking to do is to actually sort of, uh, um, sort of let's say, sail between them and and uh, and you know, conduct your own business, you know, and uh, you know, conduct your winning trades just underneath their uh, underneath their notice. So, and um, so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you found that uh, useful. Okay, so uh, as always, as I said, real time daily trading ideas, ten o'clock London, all right? That uh, come and join me. You can. Where I'll do a more in-depth uh, yeah, trade analysis, and I will just be using the both the analysis, the trading ideas that I'll be talking about, and discussing during the Mastering the Four M's uh, webinars. Um, if we know, if not, next week we will be focusing primarily on the charts, looking at you know trades and how uh, where we you know, place our exits when we're wrong and exits for when we're right. All right? And I, uh, I wish you the best of success in your own trading, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and I look forward to speaking to you uh, next Monday. Trade well.
Rolf says, thanks, Paul. You're very welcome, Rolf. Thanks for joining us, okay? And I look forward to seeing you at, uh, at many more of the future ones in the future.